Hey there! Today we're going to talk about a pen that was recently launched and I had contact with the people who sell this and they sent me one, one of these pens just to review. So, cool, thank you. This is the new pen from Cult Pens. I'm not sure whether you can see that, but it's it's cultpens.com. Uh, I've purchased stuff there in the past and they have now launched their own fountain pen, which is quite nice. It comes in a nice little plastic box which for some reason reminded me of school, why I sometimes had these things to carry my pens in. Um, comes with an international cartridge, and um, the pen is made by Caveco, the German brand, and Cult Pens sells them. And this is not a big pen, it's a small pen. This is an international cartridge. This is my hand. So it's not a big pen, so don't expect a huge pen. This is not an oversized Visconti or anything. But I like it. This pen has a lot going for it. And the word ladies pen comes to mind because it's it's small, it's slim, it will definitely fit in a purse or something. But I think this is a very cool pen. And I'm going to cover the parts of the pen, tell you what I like about it, what I don't like about it, and then I'll do a writing sample. Let's start at the very top of the cap. Just a bit of reflective stuff, quite nice. And then you have the clip, and the clip is good. It's a simple sort of industrial design with a little bit, oops, where do we go there? A little bit just folded on there. I like that. Um, nice and springy. I think you could bend this, so I won't take this too far, but it's definitely nice. Uh, it says, Cult Pens by Caveco. Um, I have no idea whether these will also be launched in other colors or finishes. It's aluminum as far as I know. Um, it's cool. Look at this. It has that nice brushed steel texture. I always like that. It has industrial look, which I really like. You have this nice taper. I'm not sure how well the camera picks it up, but the try to put something behind so you can have a somewhat better view. Um, there's a nice taper down from the cap to the barrel, uh, which is a little. It looks a little bit more pronounced in real life than it looked on my camera, but that's okay. Then you get the barrel, and then you get this final bit of tapering right there. You unscrew the cap, then you get the nib, definitely a Caveco style nib, uh, it's even marked Caveco. This is an extra fine, then you get the section, which is tapered, has these nice ribs, and then you get these threads. Now, when I saw those threads, I thought that's probably not going to be very pleasant to hold, but I was pleasantly surprised. Clearly you want to post this, at least... Uh, I, I, I really want to post this, because if I don't, I, I can't even hold it, it just disappears into my, my hand. Um, but, you know, if you have smaller hands, clearly that's not so much an issue. I suppose it's made to, made to be posted, because it, it posts very securely, um, really securely, the cap will not fall off. Uh, and then it's a pretty decently sized pen. It's not, not that small as, as you might think it is. So, posted, I think it, it definitely makes sense. And these threads are actually not particularly sharp. Yes, you feel them a little bit, especially my, my middle finger, which I curl under a pen. I, I usually feel that a bit. But because this is a nice shape, I don't really feel the threads to the extent that they bother me. So that's a good thing. It's a very small pen, so you will have to think about a converter. Well, something that's interesting is that here you got the section. This converter, this is actually all part of the section. So as you can see, it's a very long bit there. Um, then you get one of those Caveco converters. You can get those for the pen um, <coughs> if you want to use bottled ink instead of cartridges. And that's pretty much all there's to it. So this is an extra fine nib. I'm going to give you a writing sample with that. But Cult Pens was kind enough to send me every nib, which is extra fine, fine, medium, broad and double broad. That's a lot of nibs. And I'm going to try them all out. So in the writing sample, you'll see them all. So far my experience has been pretty positive. I've tried extra fine and medium. Uh, I know the Caveco nibs. I've used broad and, extra and double broad in the past, so I, I, I kind of know them. Um, usually they perform pretty well. Some of them are a bit dry. We're going to see what it is like with this pen. 
Okay. Um, what do I like about it? What do I don't like about it? I like the size. The size is both a benefit and a, a curse, so to speak. It's, it's, it's small, uh, which makes it very portable. Some people, like me, don't really like small pens, but this one is cute. This is a cute little pen, and I, I can really see this being carried with me every day. You can even put it in, a, in a, a, the pocket of your, your trousers or something, because it has a screw cap, so it will not accidentally open and stain your pants. Um, this pen has a lot going for it. Has a decent weight with that metal body. Um, things I don't like about it, well, it's small, as I said, and that's not always practical, but I mean, you're probably not going to write your memoirs with this. If you want to carry a pen every day, this is it, because it's reliable, it's good. Um, the one thing that I would say that this pen may have against it is that Caveco converter, it doesn't hold a lot of ink. It's a, an aerometric type squeeze converter. You don't draw up a whole lot of ink. Um, but you'll definitely get some ink in there to, to do a bit of writing with. Little trick, you can always take a syringe, draw up some ink, and just fill up the entire converter. Then again, if you're doing that, you might as well just refill a cartridge. In all, I think this is a very cool little pen. And I'm going to measure it now, and then we're going to do a writing sample. So, capped, we're looking at, according to my calipers, 105 millimeters exactly uncapped <coughs> sorry uncapped I come to 93 millimeters section diameter at the narrowest point is about 8 millimeters at the widest point just below the barrel it's a good yeah, it's almost nine, say nine millimeters. It's not a big difference. As to the weight, according to my little simple analog scale, we're talking about a 20 gram pen, which is not bad if you consider that I have used longer full size pens that are actually like 10 or 11 grams. So for such a small pen, it's quite interesting to have to it. And that's all there's to it. Let's do a writing sample with five nibs see how they perform, and um, that's all there's to it. I hope this was useful, and I'll see you later. Bye-bye. Okay, so here we go with that Cult Pens pen. I'll start with Extra Fine. I'm going to take every nib grade here. Um, I hope you can see this. I'm using a fairly light ink. So this is Extra Fine. Um, Chilling that a little bit. There we go. Um, so this is like writing with a very finely, sh uh, a well sharpened pencil. That's about the line width, I think. Um, wetness, well, lays down a nice, decent bit of ink. Uh, it's definitely extra fine, so it's not a gusher or anything, but there is some, some wetness. Line variation, it is a steel nib, nothing too fancy but you can squeeze out a bit of variation. Okay, the ink is Rose Tendresse by Gerbin. I thought that would uh, go well in a cute little pen. I'm going to take out the extra fine nib unit, put in the fine nib unit, slide in the converter again, and I'm just going to ink that up a bit so that the feed is well primed. I'm going to wipe it off and, yep, that's good. I'm sorry, that takes a bit of time. Then we go to F for fine. And the first thing I notice is that, strangely enough, whoops, what was that? Interesting. First thing I notice is that there was no more ink there. Is that screwed in all the way? Maybe it was a little bit loose. That's probably why it burped some ink there. First thing I notice is that this nib seems to be a bit drier than the extra fine, 
which is a little odd. Definitely get some line variation. Now I don't really see any ink burping there. No, so I think this is maybe a bit drier, but now, no, the feed is prime now, it's no longer dry, it writes pretty well. Yeah, there we go. Okay. Well, we've had extra fine, we've had fine. Unscrewing the pen barrel, taking out the converter. I always like to screw this and hold the nib and feed so that you don't misalign them. See that? There was ink on the inside. That's the outside of the nib collar. I probably didn't screw it in far enough. Let me screw this in a bit tighter so we don't get any ink leakage. Okay. That was so... In other words, this was not the fault of the pen. It was my fault. I didn't screw it in far enough. That's okay. This was not some centuries-old document. And there we go. It doesn't really help if you try to screw it in that way. This is much easier. And we have, just checking, yes, medium. And you see that's a big step up in nib width. Beautiful. Smooth. This is smooth rhodia paper. I felt a bit more feedback on some other paper. Look how wet, much wetter than the others. Lovely. Bit of line variation there. I like it. And this is very wet now. Um, this is a bit drier. I, I wiped off a little bit of the excess ink. I have to be a little careful with this pen in doing that. Um, so this is more representative. This is, what it should, this is what it should look like. So I'm just going to do another one, medium, because I had a little bit too much ink on there, which is not entirely fair. So medium should be something like the quick. Writing is smooth. You have to align the nib well on this pen. If it's a little off, it gets a bit scratchier, I got the feeling. Just a little bit of getting used to. Then it's quite smooth, pleasant to use. As I said, still wet, and now there is no big drop of ink at the bottom of the feed, so... This is what it should look like. Nice! Then we move on to broad, which is where I get really interested, because as you may know if you've seen some of my videos, I like the broader nibs. Screw that in. Put the converter in. One of those small Caveco converters. There we go. Yes, I've really wiped this off. Just a quick check. Yes, broad. This is the broad nib. What I notice, this is quite smooth too. The fine felt a little bit smoother. Now again, there's ink collecting there. Um, I'm not sure what it is with this nib and feed, but what I do notice is that I can push the nib in just a bit further. If it sticks out a bit, it may create a small gap that ink can get out of. Um, you be a little bit careful when you when you get them. Make sure the nib is pushed all the way back in the nib unit. Of course, be careful. Don't bend the nib. Just push it in gently at the shoulders like that, and then it should should work. Um, this one is somewhat on the dry side, but I'm sure that if we fiddle around a bit with it, the feed will be fully primed. then it'll probably get a bit wetter. I could also very gently operate that 
converter squeeze a bit of ink in there to prime the feed and then write and then there's more ink, more lubrication, it's also a bit smoother pleasant to use. Okay, and then finally we have to look at double broad so I'm going to screw that in I'm going to push that no, this one I can't push in any further. Okay, grab the ink bottle. We're making sure that there is no excess ink in the feed that's going to burp out. I think I got that. And here we have double broad. Ink. Fox. Hmm. Yeah, this would be my nib. Smooth. Wet. My experience with Caveco nibs is that some can indeed be a bit dry, and there is a marked difference. The medium is fairly wet, the broad is a bit dry, the fine is a bit dry, the extra fine is fairly wet, um, and this double broad seems to be definitely on the wet side too. Um, you can work on that yourself a bit. Uh, I'm not sure whether all double broads are on the wet side, but mine are. I don't see any ink burping here, which is good, so make sure you really wipe this off well. Uh, maybe use a bit of paper tissue that really absorbs when you fill the pen so that you don't get this type of stuff. Um, I think it's a lovely pen. At this price, with so many nib options, I think it's very fascinating. I'm glad uh, that uh, I was able to try this out. So, thank you Cult Pens for allowing me to try out your pen. I think it's very nice. I hope you like this review and uh, that's all that's to it. Bye bye.